the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we don't, he doesn't have the exact same view we have, so I did my own lesson on that one. Hallelujah. And, um, you know, there's no need in sitting here and having to go, well, we don't agree with that, we don't agree with that. Just <clears throat> we just did our own on that one. But everything else is great. All right? And so last week we were talking about, we're talking about the second coming of Christ. Now, uh, in, his, in his phraseology, the way he points it out, it's a two-stage event. First, the return of Christ to catch the saints away called the rapture of the church, okay, which, is a, which begins the onset of the great tribulation um, on earth, but the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven, okay? And so, um, you know, we, talk, we, we spent a lot of time on that last week, how Jesus is going to come and appear in the eastern sky. We which are alive and remain, we call up the Lord, we meet their Lord in the air, and those are the, uh, won't we won't prevent them which are asleep. They'll rise from the grave, and then we will join them in their Lord, in the air with the Lord, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Okay, and that begins the seven-year tribulation period, where we, however, are um, experiencing the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're up there, um, you know, um, sitting at the table with the Lord. I was trying to, oh, come and dine, the pastor calleth, come and dine, get an old hymn, okay? You know, so we're up there, you know, we're, we're, we're doing a heavenly party uh, with Jesus. They're under the greatest tribulation they've ever known. Um, and so there are prophecies uh, in this period concerning the Jew. Um, they will, you know, remember the Bible talks about that um, the Jews would be scattered throughout the earth. God told hey, Moses and Abraham, um, Moses, that they would be scattered throughout the earth, and then he would gather them back again, okay? So, we, you know, there are, there are fulfilled prophecies that we can look to as an underlying element of faith in the fact that there are prophecies that have not been fulfilled that are going to be, okay? Um, so that, you know, they will be scattered, and obviously that's, that's been fulfilled. The Jews were scattered all over the world yet maintained their identity. Okay, no matter where they went, they maintained almost almost 100%, not, not every, but they maintained their identity as a Jew. Russia, America, uh, no matter where they were taken and where they were scattered, they were able to, they maintained their identity as the Jews, the God's chosen people. Okay? Okay. Um, and, they, you know, they would go into exile. They would go into captivity. All their property would be taken from them. They were tortured. They were massacred. I mean, you know, you look at the Holocaust. Who did Hitler, who did Hitler hate? The Jews. Seven to eight million Jews just because they were Jews. No other reason. He had, he had, he had a demonic hatred for Jews. Um, and it doesn't seem possible that a nation could be scattered as such and yet maintain their identity. That that just uh, for so long, it, it's not like it happened. You know, uh, Estonia uh, went. You know, now, <laughs> when I was over there, the, the last time I was over there, we, you know, but I went five times. Um, once, eighteen months after the Iron Curtain fell, so it was still very much ingrained. They've been in captivity since uh, World War II, when they were overrun by the by the USSR and be, and and brought in as part of the USSR by force. It wasn't willingly. But they had had like 80 years of non-captivity in 600 years. I mean, they, every time they got turned, they got run, overrun by somebody. Okay? And they built those nice turrets and walled city around there, and it didn't do them a whole lot of good, obviously. They kept getting overrun. The Germans overran them. The Scandinavians overran them. I mean, you know, was, somebody was over, always taking over Estonia. Um, but the funny thing was, when they, um, in this under the USSR, and I'm, I'm going to tie this into the Jewish thing, um, they weren't allowed to speak their language. They weren't allowed to have Estonian colors, which is a, a, a like a French, blue, white, black striped flag. Okay, weren't allowed to have it. weren't allowed to you know you you get in trouble for having it, even having it. Okay, you weren't allowed, they weren't allowed to speak their language. They had to learn. They had to speak Russian. Okay, but the thing is, as soon as the Iron Curtain fell, the flags came out, and now then they made it so if you couldn't speak Estonian, you couldn't trade, because they still kept their language. Now that was only for like sixty years, okay, forty, fifty, sixty years, somewhere in that time frame. Forties, uh, ninety-two, fifty years, okay, about fifty years, 
They were able to maintain their identity. But think about it for a couple thousand years, trying to maintain your language and your cultural identity as a people scattered all over the world. Okay? So, you know, it, that, that is implausible to the natural mind that God could say that they would be scattered and then brought back. Okay? True. Um, <clears throat> it was, it, of course, Satan was, his purpose was what? To scatter them so they'd be absorbed and lose their identity. And so the promises of God to Abraham, to his natural lineage, couldn't be fulfilled. Okay? Um, but Deuteronomy, I mean, Numbers 23, 9 tells us, it is a people that dwelleth alone and shall not be reckoned among the nations. They would maintain their identity, even in different nations. Wherever the Jew went, they stayed Jew. Very few cases that's not true, okay, historically. Um, God declared that the Jew would be widely scattered and per uh, persecuted, but he would never become extinct, and that he himself would avenge the nations that persecuted him. Okay? Uh, Jeremiah 30, 16, all they, that, all they that devoured thee shall be devoured, and they that despoiled thee shall be spoiled. Think of this. The, the empires of Babylon, Greece, Rome, who persecuted the Jews, all passed away. We talk about those, those um, empires, the Babylonian Empire, the Greece, Greek, uh, Greece, I guess, is it Greece, Grecian or Greece, Greece Empire? Uh, is it Grecian or Greece Empire? Grecian, thank you. That's a Grecian, Grecian. I'm Eastern Carolina. We just, uh, it works. The Roman Empire, all have passed away. All those empires are gone, yet the Jewish people stayed Jews. And God said they would. Okay? Thousands of years before that. Okay? And, um, and then whenever they, they show up, they prosper. They run everything. Wherever they are, they're running everything. Okay? Um, a, a, a writer back in the, in the um, early part of this last century, the Jews braving all kinds of torments, the pangs of death, and still more um, uh, terrible pangs of death, have withstood the most awful persecutions. Yet many nations whose power has embraced the whole world and, and, and inhabited the whole world have vanished. Whilst the little handful of scattered, subjugated, and hunted folk still flourish after the organized and worldwide persecutions of 18 centuries, uh, uh, preserving their laws and customs, giving them in the infancy of the world, and preserving their unique nationality among the uh, changes of the centuries. They're still Jewish. Okay? So let's talk about that in light of present day fulfillment. Um, Prophecy now being fulfilled is the one saying that Jew will go back to his homeland. Well, modern, the, the area that, um, I can't believe I did that. I just stepped on my shoelace. I'm going to try not to trip over it because I just untied my shoe. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do because, you know, I'd rather you want me watch me tie my shoe than see me fall on my face. Okay? Um, now, you think about this, scholars looking. Jewish scholars around the world studying the scriptures and all this, seeing that they're supposed to go back home, and you're thinking how? They're thinking how? We just came, we're coming into World War II, they're persecuted, and 8 million are, are, are just eliminated. There's a persecution. Palestine is under the control, of, I believe, of the British at the time. Okay? And there's a prophecy that they'll come home. In about 1947, they just start showing up. And they start migrating, and nobody can stop it. They just go and start taking over the place. And, of course, the Palestinians lay claims, and, we, and we're still in that battle, and that's, that's just, anyway. We're not going to get into the political side of it right now, okay? But the, Jeremiah 16, 15 says, As Jehovah liveth, I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Hello. And then Amos 9.15 states, I will plant them upon their land, and they shall be no more plucked up 
out of their land, which I have given them. So it's, it's since the close of World War I, the Jews have been going back to Palestine in large numbers. Just, just migrating back, migrating back, migrating back. They've come out of every nation all over the, all over the world to go back to Israel. You know, which, which time it was called Palestine. Eleven days after the deliverance of the Holy Land from the Turks, the war suddenly ended. The deliverance of Palestine from the Turks made it possible for the Jews to return. Hallelujah. And then we have 67, we had the Six-Day War. Okay? Um, now, my, my good friend and um, former roommate at Ramah, Fawaz Fanik, uh, he just said everybody call him Frank because nobody could pronounce Fawaz back then. He was, he's Jordanian. Okay, he drew up Jordanian with the goal in life to join the Jordanian Air Force and go bomb the Jews. That was his dream until he became a Christian. But before that, he wanted to grow up, join the Jordanian Air Force, and go bomb the Jews. Now, he was too young to go bomb the Jews, but he knew people who fought in the Six-Day War and talked to them. And they, they told him, they said, when we came up over the dunes, there were millions of soldiers. <laughs> they, not only did they lose the Six-Day War, they lost land. Hello? Israel, like, doubled in six days <laughs> and hasn't given it back. <laughs> so you show up, you know, you, you Mr. Big, big Bad Guy got all these tanks and stuff. You show up, and there are millions of soldiers you weren't encountering, expecting to encounter. It was supposed to be a sneak attack. And they lose ground because God said they would. <clears throat> the only explanation was angels were there. There weren't that many people in Israel to be that many people. And this is a first-hand, this is a first-hand account telling my friend, who at the time was not interested in Israel existing. He wanted to bomb them. So it's not like he's making this up for the fun of it. Then he got saved and went to Ramah, and now he's out preaching. Hallelujah. Well, this is a trip. He wrote my, my annual in Arabic, God Loves Me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And um, God also declared that the Jew would be, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, I, I went back forth. So we have this present day fulfillment that God said that he would be brought, they brought back. Now there's future prophecy of the Jew. See, we've had past prop prophecy that was fulfilled. We had, the, you know, we had the present day of the fulfillment of them returning to their homeland. And you think about this. What nation on earth that small, with that small of an army, surrounded, so not surrounded by nations with all kinds of money to buy all kinds of weaponry, still stands and exists. And they're afraid to invade because every time they come out against them, they get their back end kicked. Every time you go bomb us, we blow you all over the planet and don't care what the diplomats at the UN say. They don't care. You know, they, they don't care. 50 mile little strip of land in some places. And they don't care. Surrounded by all this oil tycoon money, billions and billions of dollars in wealth to buy anything they want to buy to come over there and blow the Jews up, and they're, they're scared stiff to go after them. And it's not because the world hates the Jews. And we'll see that. Why? Because, because during the tribulation, they all start coming, you know, things start happening. Okay? So, the temple will be rebuilt. Now, we know that the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem is built on the ancient temple site, supposedly. About 15 years ago, they found the, they, doing archaeological digs, found the foundations to the original temple 300 feet away from the Dome of the Rock. They didn't build it in the right spot because they were going to build it so the Jews couldn't rebuild Solomon's temple. Now, 
they have threatened Israel with all out, out holy war if they try to rebuild the temple. Because they know <laughs> that they're in the wrong spot. Okay? Well, it's going to get rebuilt. Israel has started in the past 10, 15 years retraining priests after the order of, Le of the Levitical priesthood. They need a, a, a red heifer or something to be born. There's, there's, there's different things in prophecy that have to ha take place. Um, but the temple is going to be rebuilt. And after these things, I will return and I will build again the tabernacle of David. And I will set it up that the residue of men may seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon uh, whom my name is called. Hallelujah. The Antichrist will rise during this period. Rapture's already taken place. We're at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Tribulation's on the earth. The temple's rebuilt. There's persecution coming against the Jew. Now is the time of Jacob's trouble. The nations of the world, although glad to be rid of the Christians, will become bitter toward the Jews because they're still prospering. I will bless them and bless thee and, you know, and uh, multiply. In blessing, I'll bless thee and multiplying, I'll multiply thee. Now, Wayman says, I will bless thee and bless thee and, and increase thee and increase thee. Okay? There is a promise of multiplied prosperity on the Jews. They just can't help it. Hello? Because God said he would do that. And then that bless them, he'd bless those people. And if they cursed him, he'd curse them. You don't want to be on that side. Like Dr. Leroy Thompson used to say, don't be on the back side of the anointing, on the backhand of the anointing. Okay? All right. Um, and eventually the armies of the world will gather together. Because what's it all about to all these people? To the globalist. Well, do you think all the stuff going on in our country trying to divert, turn us into socialism is about equity and fairness to all people? No. It's about uh, this upper echelon of globalist, elitist, getting excessively rich on this worldwide stage, putting us down into the peon category, using our labors and our stuff for them to live. You know, hey, Bill Gates is not going to be eating um, impossible burgers. He's going to be eating real cow while you eat soyant green. Whoever saw, whoever saw the movie Soyant Green with Charlton Heston? How many never seen it? Okay. It is a time in the world where food supply, it's, uh, the food supply chain is just like nil, and they're, feed, they're eating the stuff the government provides to them called Soyant Green. It's this green stuff that they eat. And Charlton Heston is trying to figure out where it's coming from. Finally found out it's dead people they're turning into food. Now, I saw this movie back at the, as a kid back like in the 60s or something, you know, and you're, you're like, uh, how, how, are we, how much closer are we getting to that now where the government's trying to disrupt the food supply chain and then tell you, you know, you're going to eat plant-based protein. Bugs. Can't have cow. Can't have, you know, beef. So we're, they're, they're, they're got all these people conditioning them out there on, to go eat an impossible burger at Hardee's. Yeah, it's impossible. It ain't crossing my lips. <laughs> I went to the, we went to the mountains the other day, um, last um, Thursday and Friday, because Dennis had the paint show. And I, Jane, we had hot, bought hot dogs. I forgot to bring hamburger for chili. We always make our own. So I ran back down to the Dollar General. I was going to grab a can of chili. And I started looking at it. And, and I look at Armour's chili. Vegetable, textured vegetable protein. That was my beef in there. Click. I, I got some Hormel that had beef, beef and pork in it. It still won't any good, but I want about to eat veg, textured vegetable protein. Are you kidding me? Looks like beef. Tastes like beef. What is it doing to my body if you've done all that to it to make it taste and look like beef? And it's a plant. Sheesh. Anyway. Um. Go rent the movie or find the movie Soy Green with Charlton Heston, if you can even find it. Okay? Um, they'll rise up and come against Israel. They'll capture the city. And, and at the time when everything seems to be absolutely hopeless for the Jews, Christ will return. Um, and then this will happen in what we call the Battle of Armageddon. Now, he will return with his saints, but we will not fight in that battle. Okay? Um, the Lord said, uh, the 
the, the, Lord will sl the Lord will slay the lawless one or the son of perdition with the breath of his mouth. The implication being that Christ will slay with his mouth his enemies before he even reaches the earth. Hallelujah. And after Jerusalem has been taken by its enemy, the very presence of Christ will defeat them. Then when the victory is gained, his feet shall stand upon the Mount of Olives. And then the, the, it says here in Zechariah, um, Zechariah 14, 2-4, I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city, <coughs> the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half the city shall go forth into captivity, and the rest of the two people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall Jehovah go forth and fight against those nations as he fought in the day of battle, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. Now, one of the things Jesus is going to do is come through the eastern gate. The Muslims have the eastern gate because that's where the Dome of the Rock is. They bricked it up. That's going to keep the Son of God out. <laughs> Jesus goes up and goes, oh, doggone. It's bricked up. Prophecy can't be fulfilled. Just like when he walked, you know, in the Dome of the Rock in Arabic, it says there's no, there is a Son of God, there is no 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 Son of God. In circular pattern, one right after the other in the top of it. There is no Son of God. Well, if there's no Son of God, why are you saying there's not a Son of God? If he can't, if he's not, the, if there is no Son of God, why'd you break up the Eastern Gate to keep him from coming through it? I mean, there's a lot of questions here, folks. It's called stupid. Stupid is, stupid does. All right. Um, so this revelation of Jesus Christ is the second phase of the coming of Christ. Remember the first one, he doesn't come to the earth. The rapture of the church takes place. Seven years of tribulation. Marriage, supper of the Lamb. Um, but this time, every eye shall see him, and the time that the Jews will recognize him as Messiah, and they will mourn for their rejection of him. Zechariah 10, 12, 12, 10 says, I will pour out the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication, and they shall look unto me when they have, uh, whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. And then Isaiah 25, 9, it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. To the Jews, this will be the first coming. They will believe this is the first appearance of Messiah, although we know better. Okay? Um, the Jews will mourn over their rejection of Christ, but not long. Their deliverance from their earthly enemies and their spiritual darkness will now um, bring great joy to their hearts. God said in Isaiah 61, Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of Jehovah is risen upon thee. And then uh, verses 20 and 21 of the same chapter, Jehovah shall be thy everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. Thy people shall also uh, be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, and the work of my hands, that I, the Lord, may be glorified. Christ will then establish his earthly kingdom for his millennial reign. Okay? At this time, Satan is cast into the pit for a thousand years. Now, not forever. This isn't the second death. This isn't the lake of fire. This is, he's cast into the pit for a thousand years. Um, God gave a twofold prophecy concerning his son to the Jews. One was the prophecy of his first coming as a lamb of God to bear sin. The other was his coming as king to set up his earthly kingdom. Remember, the, Jew, the disciples asked Jesus before he ascended, will, you, will thou at this time set, uh, restore thy kingdom? And he said, it's not for you to know the times and the seasons. Remember that? It's not for you to know. Okay? No. That we're, we're, we're in, you know, you're looking at prophecy as one event. And it's, it's not one event. There are two events here. <clears throat> the first one is he came as a savior began the age of the church, okay, and the cutting off of the natural branch and the grafting in of the wild olive branch, the Gentiles. At the end of this comes the regrafting in of the natural branch to the tree, okay, which is the second coming of Christ, but to them they believe it's the first coming. Now, they'll, they'll find out. And it'll be revealed to them that, hey, I've already been. 
bozos. Okay? Um, so the Jews seemed to overlook the, what God had said about his first coming and could only see for his earthly kingdom. They kept looking for an earthly kingdom. And that's one of the things that caused Judas, besides the spirit, of the devil getting in him, to betray Jesus. He got disillusioned because he thought this was going to be an earthly kingdom thing. And Jesus wasn't preaching an earthly kingdom in his first time. Okay? He was talking about the spiritual kingdom at that time. The first event has been fulfilled. Here we are. We're, we're part of the fulfillment of the first event. Okay? Um, but we all are looking for the glories. So the Jews are looking for him to come the first time. We're looking for him to come back the second time. Okay? That's where we are in prophecy. Now, the Bible speaks time again of the period that Christ shall reign for a thousand years. And it will be a temporary cessation of the reign of Satan. Remember, Satan had a, a period of time. He ruled the earth because of Adam's high treason. So he is banished from the earth for a thousand years. Millennial reign of Christ. Jews will be evangelizing the world. Um, there's going to be a great era of peace. Not under, Remember, the Antichrist comes to present himself as the one who will bring great peace to the earth. But after he is defeated and slain, but it's going to be, in, it's going to be through captivity and slavery and bondage. Jesus is going to come, defeat him, blood up to the bridles of the horses, etc., all that, that gory, glorious stuff that will scare the daylights out of you if you're not a Christian and you're reading the book of Revelation and you grew up in church. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Lord, get, let me live till Sunday. I'll get saved then. <laughs> and there's a lot of scriptures that cover the millennial period. There won't be any war. Okay. Um, Michael 4, 3 says, they'll beat the swords and the plowshares, shares, their spears and the pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they uh, learn war anymore. Isaiah 30, 33, the inhabitants shall say, I am sick. The people shall, that dwell in shall be forgiven their iniquity. I mean, I'm sorry. The inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven of their iniquity. Uh, Isaiah 35, the eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame leap with a harp. The, uh, as a harp, the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the uh, wilderness shall waters break out, the streams in the desert, the parched ground shall become a pool, the thirsty land springs of water, in the habitation of dragons, where each where each lay uh, shall be grass with reeds and, rash, and, and rushes, and a highway shall be there, a way, and it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. The ransom of the Lord shall return, therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return, and come with singing. Under Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. Okay. Therefore, the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Flee away. Okay. Therefore, the redeemed. Okay. Anyway. Old charismatic course. Some of y'all remember that? Yeah. Probably not done that bad. But anyway. Habakkuk, the Lord, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Isaiah, I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall be heard no more, nor the voice of crying. During the millennium, the Jew as a nation will be following Christ, and it will become the and they will become the missionaries of the world. Because not everybody's going to get saved when Jesus shows up. It's not going to be an answer to everybody gets saved. There are going to be unsaved people out there that they're going out witnessing to, trying to get them born again and saved. Okay? The center of world worship will be Jerusalem. Jesus will be there. And many people shall come and say, Come ye, let us go to the mount of the Lord, to the house of God of Judah, um, of Jacob, and he shall teach you of his ways. And we will walk in that path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. All men will be able to witness and to realize what the Lordship of Christ will mean to humanity. Now, they mean not witnessing of it, but they will see what the Lord said. However, the reign of peace shall end when Satan is loosed from his prison after a thousand years, the millennial reign. He shall gather for war all those whose hearts have not been turned to the Lord, and although they have been in subjection. Revelation 20, when the thousand years are finished, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall come forth and to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them to war, and the number of them is the sand of the sea. 
Now, a lot of people believe Mount Gog and Magog are in modern Russia or that part of the world. Okay? Again, Jerusalem will be attacked. But God will intervene with fire sent down from heaven. And Satan, remember, um, hell shall give up its dead. And Satan and those who are dead uh, and his, his cohorts will be cast into the lake of fire. Then went up the breadth of the earth and passed the camp of the saints about. I'm sorry, I, I skipped over 20, uh, Revelation 29. Satan will be cast into the lake of fire, never more to have access to it. Never, that's it. This is the last, that's it. After this, it's over. Okay? And then the new heaven and the new earth come down. Revelation 29 and 10. And then went up over the breadth of the earth and passed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where are also the beast and the false prophets. And they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. It's it. The door is shut on Satan at this point. His attempt to overthrow the throne of God since iniquity, the day iniquity was found in him. How art thou fallen, anointed cherub? You know? For thou didst cover the throne of God until iniquity was found in thee. Okay? Eternity will arrive. There'll be a great second resurrection, the resurrection of the unbelieving dead and the great white throne of judgment where they will be judged and thrown into the lake of fire, Revelation 20, 11 through 15. Then the new heaven and the new earth ascend, for the old heaven and the old earth pass away. Okay? When this is taking place, there'll come forth the new heaven and the new earth. The first heaven and the earth shall pass away, and the sea shall be no more. Revelation 21 and 1. The church will then completely enter into its vast inheritance. No more promises, no more waiting. It's going to be the fulfillment. Now, you got to think now. A thousand years is, is as a day, and a yet day is a thousand years with the Lord. The thousand-year millennial reign of Christ isn't going to, it's going to go by pretty quick. Amen. Paul tells us in Ephesians that in the days to come, the great Father God is going to give us the wealth and the riches that he's been stored up in his great love during eternity past for us. So we get in a little bit of that. Let me say something. All the prosperity you've gotten and all the things you've seen is just a little dabble do you right now. It's nothing in comparison to what's coming. I said it's nothing in comparison to what's on the horizon. Baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. Hello. Well, I got me a Mercedes Benz. La di da. Wait till you're flying in a chariot of fire. Hello. I mean, Scotty beaming you up ain't going to be nothing like what we're going to see. Okay? Oh, the glorious truth of the wealth, the riches, and the joy that belongs to us, God's family. Through the ages of ages, we are going to know one another, talk with one another, and enjoy heaven in a blissful event. Blessed be the hope of the new heaven and the new earth. All right. So, questions for the, the chapter. How is it that the Jew today is still a witness? The Jew's history, this is the answer, is, for, is a fulfillment of God's prophecy concerning them. So we can look at the prophecies of the Jews and see those that have been fulfilled in past, those that we are currently watching, of modern prophecy fulfilled, leaning us to be able to watch the uh, unfulfilled prophecies, they're on the way. They're going to happen. I said they're going to happen. Now, here's the thing about prophecy. You can sit on this side of it and think you've got it all figured out. And then when it happens, you kind of go, oh, well, that ain't the way I thought it was going to happen. Well, duh. <clears throat> Hello? Of course not. Because you think you're going to look at that. And, you know, I remember, you know, we used to people talk about, you know, that this was going to happen and the nu nuclear bom bombs were going to come and, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And they thought they had it all figured out. We don't know what it's going to look like. We think we do. We don't. 
Paul even said that. He said, we, though we look through a glass darkly. When you look at Scripture, you're still looking through a glass darkly on these prophecies. I got it all figured out. Yeah, just like you did when you wrote the book, 87 Reasons, Jesus is coming back there in Rosh Hashanah in 1987. <laughs> and then wrote the addendum a year later, 88 Reasons, and 88 was literally, literally, no joke, he didn't come back in 87. <laughs> and resold the same book. Up there. Boy, I mean, if you still write that book, you know, 222 reasons Jesus is coming back in 2022. Why? He didn't come back in 21, didn't come back in 20, didn't come back in 19, didn't come back in 18. I mean, we, we, could, just, we could play this game all day long. Okay? Three prophetic scriptures concerning the Jew that have been fulfilled. We find in Leviticus 26, Numbers 23, and Jeremiah 30. Now, what prophecy concerning the Jews is now fulfilled? Amos 9, 15. They came back. What will take place at the revelation of Christ? The Jews will recognize him as Messiah. That's so important. And he'll establish at that time his earthly kingdom. Okay? And then we went four scriptures that refer to the Jews receiving Christ. That's Zechariah 12, Isaiah 25, Isaiah 60, Isaiah 60 later on in the chapter. Why will there be no sin, no suffering during the millennium? Because Satan won't be here. He'll be in the pit. Hello? Who shall be in the army that Satan shall gather upon his release? All those whose hearts have not really been in harmony with Christ's reign, although they were under his subjugation. There will still be evil people who just won't receive him and feel like they have to, they serve him because they have to, not because they want to. Okay? How will God save Jerusalem? He'll intervene, he'll intervene with fire. From, he loves that fire stuff, baby. The God who answers by fire. Amen. And he'll cast Satan into the lake of fire forever. And what will take place at the second resurrection? The, the, unbelieving, the unbelieving shall be raised up, face the great white throne of judgment, and then be put into the lake of fire. Now what's going to happen with the new heaven and the new earth? It's going to be a place that the church will completely enter into its vast inheritance. In Ephesians, Paul tells us, that in the days to come, the great Father God is going to give us the wealth and riches he has stored up in his great love concerning the eternity of the past for us. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. I said he's coming. And we got a job to do. And there's a lot to do. I mean, we pay this building off. You get a new building built, and all the time reaching people, building the church, growing the church, doing missions. I'm telling you, they got back, man, I was ready to get on a plane and go somewhere. The itch got all over me. And, and really, it's been there. I just had to kind of put, we, the church didn't have money, like we say. You know, we, we, we were in such debt. I, I couldn't have taken a trip across the street. There was no money. It was that bad. I mean, I had to go in debt to get a taxi to drive downtown. There was no money to do anything, much less spend $4,000 to go on a mission trip. There was, it was just that not there. We were, you know, Satan had come. He had, but you know what? He, God's turned all that around. God's brought us out. God's established us. And now, not only, you know, Jesse and Kat going to go, others are going to go. I'm going. To, I'm going. You know, my, my, my school system job has got to come to a close soon. <laughs> we got to grow this up so I can, I can go, 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 go. I, mean, I want to go to Estonia so bad I can I can hardly spit bullets over it. I haven't been there a long time. You know, I want to go. I want to go see how what, how how kind of like Paul. My, I want I want to come visit you again, see how you're doing. You know what's going on with you. Praise the Lord, Amen. So, um, you know, know when you're giving to our to the church, you're helping to help us pay this building off. You're helping run the things here, but you're also positioning us to be able to go and do things. To advance the kingdom of God, to reach people, expand the kingdom. So, where you spend the money on the building? Well, we got to do things on the building. I mean, like we're, we're just getting priced right now, putting a front porch on. Now, you call it a porch, whatever you want to call it. I mean, you know, what, how it's going to look. It's going to be a front covering. We don't need you getting wet trying to get out the front door of the church, get your umbrella up, and get out to your car. Honestly, you know, plus it'll make it look a little more friendly. We want to look welcoming. We want people to ride by and say, I, mean, I, I need to go over there and check that out. You know? Good. We want you to come check it out. Now, can I say this real quick? People know we're here. 
I had people drive up in the parking lot and say, well, you know, um, I need to come visit you guys. I see people coming in and out all the time, you know. And uh, one of their classmates, or Jesse's from yours, yours, workmates. One of them. Now they work together. He went, they went to the same Wesleyan. Now he works at the same school she's working at. And he says he lives out here. And he rides, he's, he's never seen this many cars in the parking lot before. Yeah. So um, he's a, as a Christian, he's just excited that somebody's in there doing something for the God. Well, we're on our way. There's more to do. There's more people to reach. There's more to get done. Amen. There's people to get born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And um, so, so we're, we are a resurrected ministry with a call and with a purpose, and we're heading down that road. All right. Amen. All right. Well. Oh, did he? Okay. Because jo Joe and his brother came out. They went out and cut the grass in the parking lot. Okay. Yes. Yeah, give it up. I mean, <laughs> and we'll put it on it. Yes. Uh, Joe, go, go out there and get it from you, won't you, Joe? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Just put it in here because they're coming tomorrow. To put, are you coming tomorrow? Y'all come tomorrow? Jerry and Joe are coming tomorrow to put, put it down. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Hallelujah. But they were, he cut the grass in the parking lot to get it down, so when they sprayed Roundup on it, you didn't have to have so much. Because it was, it was that tall in some places. And they, they cleaned up a bunch of stuff and got it and getting it ready to spray again and get, get killed off. Hallelujah. And we've got to go back and spray our natural areas that we've created because it's coming up through there. We've got to kill off some of that stuff. Um, but people know we're here now. I, got, I went to the post office. I told, told them we're here. Went down to the mercantile down here, and I talked to the guy a couple of times down there. We go in there talking about glass bottle sodas. And I said, I'm the pastor down at the church down there. And we, you know. He said, well, I, I need to stop by and visit, but I, you know, I work on Sunday. I said, that's okay. You know, we, you know, stop by when you, if you can. But people start, we're starting to let people know we're here. Okay? More is coming. More things are coming. Now, we're going to fill this up twice. And by then, we're going to be in a building program, building. Pay this off and be building a new building. Why? Because it's going to take people of like hearts and like minds, full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost, to fund and to do and to raise up people. Listen. Jesse and Cap are Rhema graduates. There are things in their heart to do for God. They just can't hang around here all the time and do all the work that nobody's here to do. They got to do what that God's called them to do. Okay? And there's those in our midst that are called to do things, have got to fulfill the call. So we've got to grow so we can, we can be sending people out. And they can go and come and go and come and go and come. We've got to fulfill our call. So we're going to need the base. So our faith is out there to grow the church. To be out of debt, to have a new building, and have it out of debt. And for me and Janie to be out of the school system and be working at the church doing the work of God. Man, I, I, I'm just like, I want to be liberated from that. But you know what? I'm, I'm not resentful because just like Paul went and made tents so he could keep ministering, we did what we had to do so we could keep ministering and keep the church going. And did not become a number of every year X number of churches close their doors forever. X number year, X number of pastors, about fifteen hundred a year. X number fifteen hundred pastors a year leave the ministry. We're not a casualty. And we refuse to be a casualty. I will fulfill what God said to fulfill. Amen? So instead of shutting our doors, we've opened doors. We've opened the doors. Amen? We kicked the doors out and put glass was in, bless God. <laughs> Instead of leaving the ministry, I did. Yeah, I went and took a job. Jamie took a job. We worked a job. Do I like working 40 hours a week and then doing all those stuff? No. But in order to do what we're called to do, I'll do what I have to do so we can do what we're called to do. If that's what it takes, that's what it takes. But that's coming to a close. I said, that's coming to a close. Because what we're called to do is going to require more time and more effort than we're going to have time to do if we keep doing the other part. So that's coming to a close. Amen. All right. If you're giving electronically, uh, you would cash app, go ahead. Remember, we, we'll let you know when we, we switch over to the new cash app name. Uh, once we do that, you won't be able to use the old tag, but we haven't done it yet. So 
Keep using dollar sign Faith Victory Church for Cash App. Donations at FBC.org for PayPal. That's all going to change. It's going to be some type of expedition church hashtag for Cash App. And so same thing for um, PayPal. That's coming, but we haven't done it yet. Okay. So continue using the old for your electronic giving. You can now write your checks to Expedition Church to Triad. We've changed it with the bank since we've legally changed the name. We've passed it on to the bank, and they're, they're setting everything up so that we're Expedition Church of the Triad. Hallelujah. Um, so you can give to that name. And we, we were still doing it anyway, but um, they, they, now, they now take it that way. Okay? Um, there's just so many changes going on. All right? Now, remember, as you give, you're not just giving because you have to tithe and you have to give because you, you, know, you want to. We have a mission to fulfill. There's a purpose to fulfill. Now, what do we say in our Sunday morning series? The number one purpose of everything we do is to equip us to what? Evangelize. Go reach the lost. That's, it's not about Holy Ghost meetings where we're all getting blessed. Holy Ghost meetings where you're all getting blessed is to equip you to go out and evangelize. That's what the equipping is for. Not so you can just sit around and laugh for four days. It's to equip you to evangelize. So that's what we're about. We're going to reach them. We're going to clean them and skin them. Let the Lord fry them. Hallelujah. All right. If you all need to envelope those seat backs. All right, Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they give. Thank you for the tithe. Thank you for the offerings. Thank you that the Word of God declares that you open up the windows of heaven and empty out blessings on us that we do not have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, Brother Joe, go ahead and receive that. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Next week, we're going to talk about two kinds of knowledge, um, revelation knowledge, uh, uh, sense knowledge and revelation knowledge. Hallelujah. And that'll be what we talk about next week in Lesson 36 of the Bible in the Light of Our Redemption. Hallelujah. So join us for that. And um, don't forget Sundays at 1030. Be here. We're going to enjoy that. Um, greet the red wines if you didn't get a chance to. We love all y'all. We bless you. And we give you this closing statement. Remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. That whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And here at Expedition Church, we're living a life of victory forged by faith. See you next time here. Expedition Church of the Triad. God bless you.